So polycystica ovarian syndrome is a, a condition, uh, a genetic condition, we believe it's genetically associated, um, that's got three main diagnostic features under what we call the Rotterdam criteria. Um, the Rotterdam criteria is atrocious. It's a, it, it is very unreliable, but it, it's still what we use. So we look at whether there's cysts on the ovaries. We have a look at whether there's um, high levels of testosterone or uh, what we call uh, evidence of uh, um, hirsutism, um, hair on the face or male pattern baldness or acne or, or basically anything to do with testosterone excess. And we have a look at menstrual irregularity. So uh, whether the periods are just yeah, really not coming very often or they're, they're, their cycle is very variable. And we generally say that if you've got two or the three, then you have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that, that's, I think, doesn't reflect the complexity of the disorder. I believe it's on a continuum and I believe people have degrees of it and they might only have one of those symptoms, but definitely have it. The problem is polycystic ovarian syndrome is strongly associated with insulin resistance. So a lot of females who have PCOS, um, they're trying to lose weight with one arm tied behind their back. Um, for them, they will generally be heavier on a particular diet than somebody without PCOS would be. And that's important to understand because it means that, uh, yes, it's not fair, but it does explain why these people might have troubles and they know that they just need to be more diligent and it sort of gives them an understanding of why they might be having troubles with their weight um, and the best thing you can do for polycystic ovarian syndrome is actually improve your metabolic health we often see so levels of testosterone dramatically fall when people go on ketogenic style diets after uh, with a diagnosis of pcos there's another supplement which is quite useful and it's called myoinositol and there's several studies that show that that can be beneficial and that can just overcome one of the particular deficits within PCOS. And a dose of 2,000 milligrams twice a day is what's usually studied. And I believe they also throw in 400 micrograms of folate as well. So that's certainly worth for people with polycystic ovarian syndrome, have a chat to your doctor and see whether it might be worth supplementing with myoinositol combined with a little bit of folate.